Welcome to dealing with materials data. In this course we are going to learn about collection, analysis and interpretation of uh, data. Uh, we are looking at the second module uh, which is on uh, descriptive statistics using R and uh, we have been looking at uh, how to deal with the distributions uh, while presenting experimental results. Uh, specifically we have been looking at some grain size distributions. Um, this is a case where uh, the steel consists of two phases and the grain size data of both the phases is available in a CSV file. And it is very clear that if you just look at the mean and standard deviation, it is not sufficient to describe the data. So, we need to find the distributions that fit to the given data. So, that is what we want to try um, in this session. Of course, we have not done probability distributions and we are going to do that as the next module. So, some of the ideas that we are going to use here, we are going to revisit after we do the session on probability distributions. But uh, at the moment we will just use some existing libraries and use this data and uh, look at uh, the uh, fit and, and identify what fits the given data better. So, we use uh, fit distribution plus library fit dist r plus. Uh, this is used to identify the best distribution for fitting the data and it also estimates the parameters of the distribution that fits the data. What we are going to give uh, in this session is a very tutorial introduction. So, I am not going to explain many things, it is just like a command, you give the command and you see the results and you will know what distribution it is and you will give another command just to fit it for that distribution. But we will revisit and discuss some of the details after we go through the probability distribution module. In order to understand how this distribution works, of course it is important to know about uh, skewness and uh, kurtosis and uh, you might have already been taught about skewness and kurtosis. Skewness tells how long is the tail and it is said to be positively skewed if the data is having a long tail on the right and it is said to be negatively skewed if the tail is on the left side of the data. Uh, on the other hand for a normal distribution the data has tails on both right and left side and in fact if it is uh, <coughs> very nicely uh, normally distributed you will find that it is also symmetric about the mean. On either side of the mean it will be uh, having the same type of uh, tail. But if the data is skewed positively or negatively then you will see that it has a longer tail either on the right or on the left. Kurtosis is, is also information about the tail and it uh, specifically talks about uh, the outliers and uh, it uh, gives you information as compared to a normal distribution how if heavy is the tail in the given data. So, that is what this gives. So, by looking at these two quantities it is possible to uh, find out what the uh, best fit prob in terms of probability distribution for the data could be and, and that is what we are going to do. And to little bit better understand what these uh, quantities are, uh, we know about uh, moments about the mean. So, mu k is the kth moment about the mean, it is defined as follows. So, you take the data value and you take the mean which is the first moment uh, about the origin and uh, you take the difference to the power k and you multiply by the probability distribution. This is what we are going to discuss in detail in the next session. Uh, but for now it is uh, enough if you understand that f of x i basically gives you the probability that the random variable will take the value x i uh, and we are assuming that from that distribution is where we are getting these values. And so this is basically a probability. And mu is the uh, first mean, uh, first moment about the origin uh, that is the mean and uh, sigma squared is variance. So, it is the second moment about the mean itself. So, x i minus mu whole squared f of x i is basically sigma squared. So, that is the variance and skewness and kurtosis are basically third and fourth moments about the mean. So, if you put cube and power 4 here, uh, you get skewness and kurtosis. Uh, but it is not just putting 
3 and 4 here, you also divide the resultant quantity by either sigma cube or sigma power 4. Uh, to get skewness you divide by sigma cube and you to get kurtosis you divide by sigma power 4. So, these two numbers that you generate, so third moment about the mean normalized by sigma cube where sigma is the standard deviation, you know it is the square root of variance. And so, this quantities, so skewness and kurtosis is what we are going to use. Uh, to understand what is the probability distribution that describes our data uh, properly. Uh, specifically, we are going to look at the grain size data and understand how it is uh, uh, distributed. So, you can see that uh, our grain size data for phase 1 and phase 2 um, has huge skewness and also kurtosis. So, you can see that uh, the distribution is of course one sided, so it has a long tail to the left and this also has a long tail to the left. So, in our definition we will say that this is negatively skewed and also you can see the, uh, the fatness or thickness of the tail. So, as compared to a normal distribution of course, uh, these tails are um, much more uh, fatter. So, this is the information, but we are going to get numbers for these two quantities and they are defined in terms of uh, moments uh, about the uh, mean uh, and appropriately normalized. So, that is what we are going to do and uh, for do, doing that we are going to use uh, fit uh, distribution plus library and while we analyze the data and uh, come up with a fit for the given data. Uh, we also have to evaluate how good is your uh, um, fitting and for that there are measures uh, specifically you will see that uh, R gives you information about log likelihood AIC which is Akai case information criterion and BIC which is the Bayesian uh, information criterion. Of course, uh, we will come back to understand these quantities better after we learn about probability distributions and uh, inference and, and, and things like that, but for now. Uh, you just have to pay attention and see what are these uh, um, quantities that are returns when you try to do the fitting. So, let us uh, go and do the fitting as usual. So, we will start with uh, uh, getting the data. So, let us uh, start R uh, and this is version 3.6.1. We need to know the uh, working directory and uh, so we are in the uh, right directory. So, um, we need to uh, first invoke the library and let us do that. So, we want to use the fit the str plus ok and then we want to read the data so the the csv file uh, from data um, grain size data set 2.csv is read and then we are going to find out the face identity 1 and 2 so we are going to save those row numbers in i1 and i2 so, if you pull out from x all the i1 ones that is for phase 1 let us call it x1 and for i2 uh, it is all for phase 2 let us call it as x2. So, we have done and we have already seen this data. So, there are 3664 observations um, and uh, there are 6 variables there and of which about 457 is uh, for phase 1 and remaining 3200 are for phase 2. Um, so, we have done this. So, now let us uh, use this command right ok. So, it gives you the, so what is DESC dist? So, let us look up. So, it is description of empirical distribution of non-sensor data. Um, there is this difference between sensor data and non-sensor data. Uh, suppose for some reason 
uh, to save time or uh, because you are not able to uh, continue the experiment for uh, longer times. If you arbitrarily stop the experiment at some time uh, or, or beyond some particular um, uh, point, then that is called a sensor data. What we have uh, is not sensor data. So, this is uh, DSC dist is for description of distribution that is what description of distribution is what it is and it is for uh, the empirical data and the data should be non-censored and in that case you can use this. And if we look at uh, the data that we have for phase 1, the grain size distribution data, uh, then it lists several theoretical distributions, all of which we are going to learn in the next module, uh, normal distribution, uniform distribution, exponential, logistic, beta, log normal, gamma. And it also tells you that Weibull is uh, close to gamma and uh, log normal, right. So, if you have uh, gamma, and uh, log normal is uh, the, the dotted point here. So, so the, the Weibull is uh, close to these two uh, distributions. And uh, so, where is our observation? Our observation lies in this uh, band uh, which is for beta distribution. So, uh, this, this graph it is called Cullen Frey graph and it is a graph of square of skewness versus uh, kurtosis. And so, for example, for normal the, the kurtosis is here at 3 and the square of skewness is here uh, which is close to 0. So, by taking these two values it knows that if some data falls somewhere here then it must be normally distributed and so on and so forth. So, because our data falls somewhere here in the beta regime we know that the data is um, uh, probably best described by the uh, beta distribution and uh, it gives you the, the this we have already seen that uh, minimum value is 20.8 and maximum is 24.3 in this case. <coughs> the median value is 24.3 because we saw lots of data points which were at 24.3 and the mean was 24.1 and the standard deviation was uh, 0.4. So, it was 24.1 plus or minus 0.4. So, it, it gives you the same data and it now in addition has estimated the skewness and the kurtosis. So, let us do this same thing for uh, the uh, data for phase 2, the grain size data for phase 2. Again we see that uh, this has a much larger range, minimum is 11.9, maximum is 24.3, median is again 24.3. So, you can see that the median is the same. And the mean is also quite close, so it is 23.4 and the standard deviation is about 2. So, it is 23.4 plus or minus 2 and this is 24.1 plus or minus 0.4. So, these two data points in terms of mean and uh, standard deviation if you look at they are almost the same, but obviously the skewness is different okay, or, or quite close, it is not very different. So, it is minus 3.1 and this is uh, minus 2.9, so this is uh, uh, not very different. And kurtosis is again this is about 16 and this is about 11.4, so there is uh, uh, some difference. Uh, so, obviously it is not the same as uh, phase 1, but it is also a beta distribution and it is uh, slightly different from the uh, previous one, right. So, so we notice that uh, our data again falls in the uh, beta distribution regime and uh, but it is different from the earlier one. So, we can also try to get them both in the same figure um, by doing this uh, that will make life easy for us to compare. So, you can see that uh, so this goes to um, uh, this point and uh, so, so, so th these values are different. So, this is uh, 12 and this is 16. So, this is somewhere about 16 and this is somewhere about uh, 11 point something. And in terms of uh, the, the square of skewness, uh, so this is somewhere about near 10 and this is uh, uh, less than 9. Uh, but in both cases it falls in this band which is for beta distribution. So, let us uh, go back and try to fit the distribution. 
okay, now that we know that it is a, a beta etc. So, can we fit? Uh, for fitting to fit to beta you will learn that uh, the value has to be between 0 and 1. So, that is what we are going to do, we are going to normalize the values to be between 0 and 1. So, x is nothing but the x1 values uh, divided by the maximum and y is nothing but x2 divided by its maximum. So, we have two normalized values and let us use this, uh, let us try to fit it to beta. Okay. So, we say that okay, fit to the distribution, take the data x and fit to the distribution and fit it to beta and uh, um, we are going to use the data and uh, the fit will be saved as uh, fit dot b1. Uh, if you try then we get the information that uh, function mle failed. Uh, what is MLE? MLE is uh, maximum likelihood estimation and if it failed then we can try to use other methods to fit. Let us use this MME moment matching estimation. How do we know these uh, methods? Of course, you can use uh, help uh, fit uh, dist for example, um, you will get this information. So, it says the fit of univariate distributions to non-sensor data by maximum likelihood or moment matching or quantile matching or maximizing goodness of fit, uh, goodness of, uh, fit estimation MGE. So, so let us try the MME. So, for that you have to say method equal to this ok. So, that fit works and you can get information about that uh, uh, fit. So, you can see that uh, fitting of the distribution beta by matching moments and uh, these are the parameters and it gives you this log likelihood AIC, BIC uh, all to be infinity. So, this is what I said we want to understand what these quantities are, uh, but we will come back to it after we uh, do some more modules. Uh, and, and when we learn about uh, inferences uh, and, and things like that, we will come back and uh, take a look at it. Okay, so, uh, you can do the fitting and then of course, you can plot. Um, okay. So, you can see that uh, the data and the density plot is here and the CDF plot is here. So, these are the data and the red line that runs through is basically our fit and you can see the QQ plot and so that also seems to fit well and this is the PP plot. So, what are these uh, QQ plots and PP plots uh, we will learn when we look at the distributions uh, and, and uh, learn about uh, these uh, quantities. Uh, but for now uh, this seems to fit well and uh, so we can do the same exercise uh, for uh, the second data y as fit b2. So, we again see that MLE has failed. So, we will again use method to be MME and see if that works, obviously that works. So, you can look at what this fit is. Uh, so, again you get these log likelihood parameters and uh, AAC, BAC parameters to be infinity, we will come back and understand what it is but for now we can try to plot and see. So, again you see that the empirical and theoretical densities, the empirical and theoretical uh, cumulative distribution functions and the QQ plot and PP plot they are all ok. And as compared to the previous case the QQ plot is slightly off, but, uh, but it is still ok, it is fitting most of the data and so that is what we are realizing. Now that we have done this exercise, uh, we have been uh, looking at also the electrical conductivity data of ETP copper and uh, we noticed that that data was fitting or looking like uh, normal distribution. Uh, is it so? Can we check if it is indeed uh, normal distribution? So, for doing that let us do this. So, So, we are going to read the data uh, that is the ETP copper conductivity data 
and we are going to say describe that uh, distribution, that data. And we find that our observation of course lies along this uh, star which is normal distribution. So this is what we have been noticing and that uh, this is uh, minimum is 101.1, maximum is 101.5, median is 101.3 and mean is 101.32 and uh, standard deviation was 0.1. So these we have already seen and uh, the skewness you can see is quite close to 0 and kurtosis is uh, quite close to 3. So this uh, shows you that uh, this is uh, uh, very nice uh, normal uh, distribution. Of course, uh, we can check that it indeed is so. Uh, how do we do that? So we try to fit this to normal distribution and uh, here is the So we say that okay, fit the distribution, take the X data and fit it to normal distribution and give the summary of the fit. So we again find that uh, of course it fits uh, and it used the maximum likelihood uh, method and this is a mean and uh, standard error um, and the standard deviation. So it is like 0.1 and uh, this time you can see that the log likelihood, the AIC, BIC, etc., are not infinities. So it is giving you some numbers and, uh, and it also gives you what is known as correlation matrix. So we will at some point look at what it is. Um, of course, let us plot um, the normal fit we have made. So you can see that the experimental and uh, the empirical and theoretical densities match and the cumulative distribution functions match and the QQ plot is a nice uh, uh, line uh, as also the PP plot. So, so we can see that in this case everything is uh, uh, nicely following the normal distribution. So to summarize, so we have been uh, looking at data. And sometimes we find that the data can be better described by distributions. Um, for example, in the case of conductivity, uh, this is a repeated measurements which give you values about some mean and uh, the distribution is there because of random uh, noise and that is why it is a normal distribution. But on the other hand, uh, every single measurement gives you a set of uh, distribution for grain sizes. And uh, this obviously is not a normal distribution or a bell shaped curve. So to describe these kind of uh, distributions uh, you can use this library fit uh, DASTR plus and you can get information and uh, generally uh, the, the methodology here is that by looking at where the uh, skewness and kurtosis values lie, we decide what could be the best uh, theoretical distribution that will fit the uh, given empirical data. So that is the exercise that we have done. And we will come back to some aspects of this uh, fitting exercise after we go through the uh, probability distribution. Thank you.